So today I'm gonna to be doing the first episode of my new series, UX Makeovers. Yes! I'm excited because I love makeover stories and I am a big fan of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And I love the guys, the energy that they bring. And also I just love the transformation stories. So I thought, why not bring this into website design? Let's make really crappy or not great experiences into beautiful, amazing, positive, good experiences. So today's makeover is featuring a nonprofit called Children's Home Society of California. Since 1891, they have been working to protect the community's children and strengthen families through diverse programs and services, such as helping parents get free or discounted childcare to helping with the adoption process. Why we're gonna be focusing on that, this site is because number one, a friend of mine reached out a couple months ago and said that it was so difficult to use this site. She was like, please help. The other thing is I would really like to start volunteering some of my time helping nonprofits. A lot of times nonprofits do not have the resources to pay for good design. So I'd like to help these guys out by redesigning their navigation as well as redesigning one of their desktop screens. We're gonna be doing the full process today on just the navigation. So I'm gonna be going over the heuristic evaluation, a competitive comparison, comparative analysis, a card sort, and also how I'm redesigning the uh, navigation in Adobe XD. Don't worry if some of these terms are going over your head because I will be defining these as we go along. Let's begin the makeover. So a heuristic evaluation is when you just judge a site. You're like, this is working, this isn't working, this makes me wanna scream. <laughs> And this is typically done by someone who is a UX expert, somebody who understands UX best practices. But anybody can do an evaluation, and there's actually a lot of checklists out there that you can download and you can look at and, and do a proper evaluation yourself. I will also list some of those resources down in the description below. All right, so let's look at the navigation of the site. So the first thing I notice is that there's a lot of colors in the navigation. There's red, there's orange, there's green, there's yellow, there's blue, there's white. It's so overwhelming. I don't know where I should be looking and I don't know what their call to action, what they want me to do on this site. And there's also just a lot of links. It feels very cluttered. And people are on here to find help. They're potentially in an emotional state where they want clarity and ease. And the first thing you noticed on the navigation makes you feel like lost already. And it's not a good feeling to have. Now the logo is illegible almost. It's all caps. There's barely any line spacing. It's really not good to have that many caps used, especially in a small um, area like that. It's really hard to read. The font color to me looks a little bit difficult to read. Something that I use is a site called Accessibility Colors. You don't have to follow this, but it's a really good practice to start thinking about accessibility. You wanna make sure that most people who land on your site can see the text. It's very important. So I have a Google plugin called What Font. I will also put the link in the description. I use that to grab some text and then I'll see the style, the weight, the size, and the color. So in this case, I see it's an 18 point font and here's the color here. And I'm gonna just paste that into the accessible color site. And what it says is here, it, it, it fails AA. Um, because the required contrast ratio is at 4.5, ours is at 2.02, .02, which is not very good. And what's great about this is they give you some options. So they're like, you can either change the background color or you can change the text color to something that's very similar. The titles also are not very clear, like the make a difference, post-adoption program, is that their only program that they offer? So it's difficult for me to figure out where to go for a particular service. The other thing is the, the order of their navigation titles. It starts with about. I would like to see these in the order of importance from a user's perspective. I don't necessarily want to know about the company yet. I want to know about the services that they offer. Visually, it seems like they may want the users to spend more time on the bright colors in that um, top row of the navigation. But I'm not really sure because it's 
Usually the elements that are in that row are secondary elements that a business wants a user to pay attention to. I also feel like I get information overload when I'm looking at the drop downs. It's like news, workshop and events. There's like eight things in there. So the definition of a user interview is an interview with a user. <laughs> Just kidding. To give it a bit more clarity, what you're trying to get out of a user interview is to understand all the things that you cannot get from the data. So you wanna understand why they're on that site. If there are some frustrations, why do they have frustrations? What are their goals on the site and so forth? So you're really trying to paint a picture of why someone is coming onto the site and who this person is. My goal for this interview is to just understand what is this person's emotional state and mental state? Why did they get onto this website? So the next thing I did was I came up with some interview questions and then I interviewed Ashley. So what were your goals when you first landed on Children's Home Society? Understanding of what the services are and how to qualify for that. I guess um, I was hoping for maybe some assistance programs for care because I know that's my biggest expense with two small children is being able to have affordable quality care. So if they could help on the care aspect, wonderful. If they could help um, on any other aspects, so maybe, I don't know, maybe they have um, affordable food or reduced prices for things that maybe babies need, you know, that would have been great. Uh, so that was my hope. Yeah, totally. Now, um, okay, so if you don't mind uh, going to the site, when you first look at this this screen um, and you're looking at like the navigation top area, what are your thoughts here? Where do you think you should first go? My first is kind of where I'm hovering right here is this apply for child care assistance. It did recognize the about, which I obviously really don't care about. Um, as a mom who's in need, and probably if you're a mom and you're in need, you're probably busy. You don't really have, I don't really want to read your mission statement. Anything else you wanted to, to share with me? Instead of feeling like a kid when I land here with the <laughs> colors, uh, the primary color scale here, um, I feel like a kid. I want to help my kid. I want to be an adult. I want to feel like an adult. So <laughs> that's helpful. <laughs> Hard sorting is basically grouping by similarity. So a UX designer will take some post-its, some index cards, whatever little scrap pieces of paper they've got lying around the house, and they'll write down all the things that you need to be regrouped, and then you'll just group them by similarity. This is something I think like four-year-olds learn to do at some point. Hey guys, so Apple, where would you think that would go? Ooh. Easy enough? Yes. If I'm alone or if I'm working with a client or a user remotely, I'll usually do this on Google Spreadsheets because it's something that you can do with someone remote in real time. I'm just gonna be grabbing all the primary navigation titles and putting them into the spreadsheet like so and just to have like a long running list here on the left hand side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a look at each one. So here, apply for child care assistance. I'll put that in a row here. This is going to be my first group. Uh, and the second thing is a child care referral. So those seem like they should be grouped together, yeah? So I'm gonna put that underneath. Now this is seeming like a group that's, that, are, that are their services or their programs. So you'll just move along like so, grouping similar uh, navigation titles. The other thing I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the content on these sites just to see if there might be a better title for it or if it's really in the right place or not. Next, you're gonna be doing a competitive comparative analysis, which means you're just gonna be stealing some of the best stuff that your competitors are doing. Ooh, this competitor site looks really good. I'm gonna steal those icons. I'm gonna steal that drop down style. Ooh, but that mobile responsive looks beat. What I usually do is create a spreadsheet. So this is gonna be a really basic spreadsheet where on the left side, I'm gonna have the features that I'm looking at. And on the top, I'm going to have the, um, the sites that I'm looking at. So when I go onto Red Cross, in the drop down, there's like a little image that makes you feel a little bit more, makes you feel a little something and relates to the drop down. So I really like that. Now I'm also looking at this other one for Team Rubicon. Their primary navigation titles are really succinct. 
It's very clear what type of content is gonna live on those pages. Now here comes the fun stuff, the actual design. So I'm gonna be designing in Adobe XD. It's my preferred design tool. And it's really, really easy for beginners to learn. So a wireframe is just a bunch of gray squares on a screen and there's some like uh, this language that makes absolute no sense to anyone. It's not even a real language and that's what we use as placeholder copy on the wireframe and it's really just to understand the structure so that we don't spend any time thinking about oh we need to change this color to this and thinking about moving each thing into a certain amount of pixels from another object on the screen. We're just thinking about layout and how it's going to work. That's a wireframe, yeah. So this is not going to be a full tutorial. I'll walk you through some of how Adobe XD works. Um, but I will say that your first project, uh, I believe is still free. So you it's free for you to download and try out. The first thing I do is I am going to create an art board and then I'm gonna just put logo here. Logo, that's where the logo is going to be placed on the left hand side. And this is pretty standard for navigation for the logo to be on the left hand side. And I've decided to make uh, the call to action donate now because that's a common one I am seeing on a lot of their competitors. And then now I'm going to want to wireframe what that drop down is going to look like. Just like that red cross example, I really want to add an image, something that's friendlier, that makes it, you know, visually interesting. So I'm going I'm going to make another rectangle and that's where I want the image to go. Again, I told you it's just a bunch of gray squares. This is how we do, <laughs> this is wireframes. It's super simple, basic, don't even worry about making this super beautiful. And then this is a really cool thing about Adobe XD is what I will do is I will use the Google Sheets plugin because I did all of my stuff in Google Sheets already. I'm gonna paste the public link in here they now have all of the things that were in that column, which is really great. So now I wanna make sure that you know which item is being selected. So I'm going to put a rectangle, some sort of signal that um, that is the one that you've selected so you know where you're at. All right, so I feel pretty good about this wireframe. Let me hand it off to our UI designer. It's still me, okay. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna handle this logo. Uh, I don't do logo design myself usually. What I was thinking about is the fact that right now it's so long, it's hard to even, it's hard to read and it's definitely hard to remember. So if I just called it CHS, like Children's Home Society, Children's, Children's Home Society, uh, I just remembered as CHS, that's gonna be a lot easier for me. And it's something that you can use on your social media and other places because that logo is not going to work um, on all places, and especially like how did someone read that on mobile? I don't know. I'm going to play with this color wheel and just brighten it up a little bit more, make it more of a friendlier color. Yeah, yeah, that looks friendly. For the fonts, I've decided to use Avenir um, because it's been one of my favorites lately. It just looks so friendly and clean. I feel like it makes you feel good. So now let's do the drop down. Really cool feature from Adobe XD that I just love so much is the ability to just drag and drop in an image and it's just gonna automatically resize it for you, mask it, it's amazing. We're in prototype mode and I'm gonna click and there it goes, it came down from underneath the navigation. Did you see that? So as you can see here, I got rid of all the colors that were previously used here. Um, as Ashley mentioned, she felt uh, that they were using all the primary colors on this website and it made her feel like a child. So I decided to use the color blue because blue is associated with trust. I did use a gradient, uh, a little bit of a 
brighter teal blue along with this primary blue because I felt like it made it feel a bit more friendlier. Um, also, this CHS is located in California. So I thought about how the ocean makes people feel calm and how the beach makes people feel comfortable and warm and good. And I wanted to bring some of those elements into the colors. And as you can see, I changed the call to action from donate now to apply for assistance. I wanted the call to action to be more oriented towards the person who's going to be using this site the most. Because I want the user to associate getting care and getting support uh, with this service, I wanted to have the image uh, of the woman taking care of children inside the drop-down menu. It's just another indication that she's in the right place. So my next video is going to be a redesign of one of the screens on the website. So don't miss out on that. I'm gonna also do some wireframing, some more competitive analysis, and the redesign as well. So it's gonna be really cool. So if you like this video and you're excited to see more tutorials, more about my process and how I do things, more uh, goofy little definitions of UX terminology, um, please subscribe to my channel and please like this video if you liked it. And I'll see you next week for my next part two of this video.